we present Neural Descriptor Fields, an SE3 equivariant object representation for robotic manipulation. Suppose a robot is provided with a demonstration of grasping an upright mug and hanging it on a rack. We propose a system that can use just a small handful of these demonstrations to repeat the task on a new mug, which has a different shape and is placed in a never-before-seen pose. More generally, our goal is to observe just a few examples of pick-and-place and easily generalize the execution to novel objects in poses that were never seen in the demonstrations. What are the main challenges to overcome in building such a system? First, using a very small number of demonstrations means end-to-end -end training will not generalize. We also wish to enable both picking and placing. Prior work has used dense correspondence models to grasp unseen objects from a single demonstration. The modeling correspondence in 2D makes it difficult to specify a target configuration for placing. Representing objects using sparse semantic key points can enable both picking and placing, but this requires key point detectors trained on a large hand-labeled dataset for each task. Furthermore, none of these approaches work well when objects are in out-of-distribution poses. We propose neural descriptor fields, a novel representation that models objects as continuous 3D fields of descriptors and enables us to overcome the full set of these challenges. To understand our approach, let's first assume the demonstration and test mugs are identical. We can attach a body frame to the object, record the grass pose in this frame, and estimate the pose of the mug in its new configuration. The grasp can be executed by moving to the recorded grass pose, expressed in the new frame. But when the mug has a different shape, this procedure fails. Since the gripper must align to a local geometric feature like the rim, and this feature changes location on the new shape, we must instead attach a local reference frame that moves with the task relevant feature. Moving to the demonstrated grass pose, expressed in the corresponding local frame on the new shape, can then align the gripper to the rim. However, the local feature is task specific, so we must be able to attach local frames at different local features. For instance, to place the mug on a shelf, we can attach a frame to the bottom of the mug, detect the corresponding frame, and align the shelf with the bottom of the new mug. Therefore, we want the ability to correspond any local coordinate frame across different objects, and to use the demonstrations to obtain a specific coordinate frame that is attached to a task-relevant geometric feature. With this goal in mind, we now describe our approach. We first propose our neural point descriptor field, which is a continuous function parameterized as a neural network that takes in as input a 3D point X and a point cloud P and outputs a descriptor value. This descriptor varies depending on the 3D location of X and encodes information about the spatial relationship of X to the geometric features of the object. Watch as the output color changes depending on the 3D location of the green point. We want our descriptors to encode this information in a way that is consistent across instances from a category, such that points near similar geometric features, like these two points on the handles of two different mugs, are mapped to the same descriptor value. A natural question to then ask is how can we build a descriptor field with a property of encoding correspondences across shapes? Our approach is to construct descriptors using a neural implicit representation trained using self-supervised 3D reconstruction. Specifically, we train an occupancy network to map an object point cloud and any 3D coordinate to a binary value indicating whether the point is inside or outside the shape. Importantly, we train this representation using ground truth 3D shapes generated fully offline and in simulation. We find that the intermediate activations of the occupancy network can serve as descriptors that are consistent across shapes in the category. We thus propose to parameterize our point descriptor field as a function that maps every 3D coordinate to the vector of intermediate activations of a neural implicit shape representation trained for 3D reconstruction. Note that there may be other ways to train descriptor fields that encode category-level correspondence. 
However, we must also consider what might happen if the object is in a different pose. If we naively use these features as descriptors, rotating the mug and the queried point together could lead to a new descriptor value, even though the point is still near the handle of the rotated mug. We instead desire to have a joint transformation of the object point cloud and the query point leave the descriptor value unchanged, since the point would have the same position relative to the object. In other words, we want transformations of the object to lead to a corresponding transformation of the descriptor field. Specifically, we desire for our point descriptor field to be SE3 equivariant. We can easily obtain translation equivariance by operating with mean-centered point clouds. For rotation equivariance, we incorporate the recently proposed vector neurons into our point cloud encoder. With this construction, transforming the point cloud and the input jointly leaves the descriptor unchanged. Given a reference point, we now want to obtain the corresponding point for a new shape. We set this up as an energy minimization problem, where energy is defined as the descriptor difference between two points. Different points lead to different energies. When we consider descriptor distances throughout the whole region, we obtain continuous energy landscapes that can be optimized to find the minima that corresponds to the reference point. We illustrate this energy landscape for both mugs and bowls. Target points on the demonstration point cloud are shown in green, and the inferred corresponding point for a new shape is shown in blue at the minima of the energy landscape. Due to equivariance of our descriptor field, Rotations and translations of the shape lead to corresponding transformations of the energy landscape. However, recall that our initial goal was to encode and correspond local coordinate frames, and not just points. This means we have to go beyond individual point descriptors, since there are multiple frame orientations that all correspond to the same point. To constrain and encode the full SE3 pose of a local coordinate frame, we have to attach more points and subject them all to move together as a rigid body. We encode the set of query points via concatenation of their individual point descriptors. If we now consider applying different SE3 transformations to the point set, the query point descriptors change accordingly. Through this construction, we obtain pose descriptor fields which represent SE3 poses of the point set relative to some canonical pose in the world frame. This yields a descriptor that also encodes the pose of a local frame that is rigidly attached to the query points. Note that this construction allows our pose descriptor field to inherit the same correspondence and equivariance properties of the point descriptor field. This is illustrated in the visualization. Given a new object with a different shape and orientation, a query point set placed in a similar configuration relative to the mug has a similar pose descriptor, as shown by the matching colors. This configuration of the query points subsequently provides a local frame near the new shape, such that the two local frames are positioned and oriented similarly relative to the respective mugs. Furthermore, an important observation is that we can easily attach an external rigid body, such as the gripper, to the query points. In this way, the body frame that defines the pose of the gripper can directly parametrize a local frame in the vicinity of the object, and we can therefore directly encode this gripper pose using our pose descriptor field. Given a local frame defined near a reference point cloud, we are now ready to achieve our original goal of finding a corresponding frame in the vicinity of a new point cloud. We highlight this with an example of matching a local frame defined via the gripper pose obtained from a grasping demonstration. We can find the corresponding local frame by setting up an energy optimization over poses. Specifically, distances between descriptors representing local frames induce an energy landscape over SE3 poses, which can be minimized to obtain the pose of a local frame that matches the demonstration. Here we illustrate this optimization process. The local frame parametrizes the pose of the gripper, and this gripper pose is optimized to obtain a grasp along the rim of a new mug. Note that we can attach arbitrary external rigid objects to the query point set. Here we show this for both a gripper and a rack, whose pose is optimized to obtain the relative configuration for hanging the mug. 
This is what allows us to achieve our goal of performing both picking and placing. However, an important question remains. How do we choose a set of query points that aligns the local frame relative to the task relevant geometric features? Any of these differently located point sets can be attached to the same coordinate frame to obtain a pose descriptor, but they will lead to energy landscapes with minima in different 3D locations. If we want the pose descriptor to be sensitive to a location near a specific feature, such as the rim, then we must choose points near the rim. Instead of manually selecting the location of these points, we can use the demonstrations to sample query points near the contact location between the object and the gripper. To avoid assuming a precisely known contact location, we found that a robust heuristic is to sample query points uniformly in the bounding box of the external object that is used in the task, such as the gripper, rack, or shelf. Here we show the robotic manipulation capabilities enabled by our method in the real world. Object point clouds are obtained from depth cameras at the corners of the table, and the gripper pose is recorded in grasping and placing configurations. After collecting demos, we leverage our descriptor field energy optimization to recover grasping and placing poses on a set of unseen mugs with different shapes and sizes. Due to the equivariance of our descriptors, the robot can execute the task on a mug placed in a sideways pose that was never seen in the demonstrations. Here we see more examples of the robot executing the task on mugs placed in out-of-distribution poses. We also demonstrate our approach on other categories. Here the task is to grasp a bowl and place it upright on the side of the table. Again, note that the test bowls are placed in random initial configurations that were unseen in the demos. The same can be seen in this task where the robot must grasp the top of the bottle from the side and place it upright on the black shelf. In summary, we propose neural descriptor fields, a novel representation that models objects as 3D neural fields of descriptors. These descriptors encode correspondence across shapes, are trained via self-supervised 3D reconstruction, and are SE3 equivariant. These descriptor fields allow us to correspond local coordinate frames attached to task-relevant geometry across objects, and to obtain the task-relevant geometric features directly from demonstrations. Finally, we show that we can use neural descriptor fields to overcome the set of challenges outlined at the beginning of the talk and perform pick and place on unseen objects in out of distribution poses from just a few demonstrations. Thank you, and for more information, please see our paper.